Welcome again. Right now in our readings, we are at John chapter 1, verses 14, and we're going to read through verse 17. We're going to be talking about the law of Moses, the law versus grace and truth. Let's start at verse 14. The word became flesh and lived among us. We saw his glory, such glory as of the one and only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. I can't, I can't read that without stopping again and explaining this once more. It's such a powerful point. It's such an exciting thing. Once you realize what exactly this means, it will change your life, okay? The word here, the logos, okay, is what God actually said, okay? The word of God is what God said. Okay, the word of Adam is what Adam said. The word of Moses is what Moses said. The word of Paul is what Paul said. The word of Peter is what Peter said. The word of David is what David said. What you got to do is you got to discern between what a human says and what God says. Because sometimes, for example, in the books in the book of Psalms, we have David, it sounds like David speaking, but what he's doing is he's speaking prophetically. In other words, when he, when he sat down to write the Psalms, he sat down and he let God speak through him, okay? So even though it doesn't say specifically or explicitly, thus saith the Lord, we know uh, by reading the Psalms and by diligent study that what is written in the Psalms, for the most part, if not all of it, is thus saith the Lord, because it is prophetically written. It is written in a prophetic sense. It is written by the prophet David, okay? David. And and you see now, for example, in another example, you know, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah says, you know, thus saith the Lord. Well, thus saith the Lord is in quotations. That which is in quotations is the word of God, okay? And what the word of God is, what God says is actually a literal representation of who Jesus is. Let me put it this way. In Genesis chapter 1, it says, you know, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Well, Jesus said, I am the light. You know, we read again later on in the chapter, God said, let the tender herbs spring forth, you know, from the, from the earth. And, and it says, in the, and the tender herbs did. Well, it says that Jesus was the tender shoot, Okay. It says later on, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image. Again, this is the word of God. Let us make man in our image. It's, it's in quotations. It is the word of God. That is Jesus. Jesus is the man made in God's image. So everything that's in quotations and everything that's spoken prophetically is the word of God. Okay. What's in the quotations about what Adam said, what Eve said, what Job said, what David said, what Abraham said. That's not the word of God. That's the word of Abraham, David, Job, <laughs> you know, on and on and on it goes, okay? So, again, you have to specify, you have to define, you have to be able to discern when you're reading the scriptures what is the word of God and what is not the word of God. What the word of God is, is what God actually spoke, literally spoke from his, from his own mouth. For example, the book of Job. Much of it is not the word of God. Much of it is the word of Job and his three friends. Okay? You can't, you can't quote Job and say this is what God said. No, that's not what God said. That's what Job said. Okay? That's the word of Job. But you wanna, if you want to quote the word of God, what God actually said, you have to quote what is in the quotations. This is what the Lord said to Job. Okay? So, the word became flesh. That is obviously speaking about Jesus because it's talking about here the only son of the father full of grace and truth so Jesus is the personification Jesus is the word of God in human form now I want to challenge you and I'm going to move on very quickly here I want to challenge you as you read the scriptures especially in the Old Testament so-called Old Testament every time you run across quotations thus saith the Lord every time you run across this is what God said or anytime you run across run across a prophetic passage such as the Psalms and such, think to yourself, hey, this is the Word of God, and this is Jesus. This is Jesus. Now, for more information about this, I, 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 
really high, highly recommend you go back to my earlier teaching on John chapter 1, verse 1, talking about the Word of God. What is the Word of God? Listen to that because that, I'm going to give you a lot more That'll give you a lot more detail than what I get to get into right now. I'm not going to get into all that much detail. But let's read on. Verse 15, John testified about him, about Jesus. He cried out saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, for he was before me. So John recognized that Jesus existed before the creation of the world. Uh, we talked about this earlier in our earlier teachings on the passages and the verses that we read uh, that comes that precedes this. Okay, so John recognizes that Jesus existed before the world began. Jesus existed, and actually, I, may I submit to you that Adam and Eve knew Jesus, Abraham knew Jesus, Moses knew Jesus. You know, Paul says that the gospel was preached to Abraham. There's only one gospel. I mean, God doesn't have a double standard, double gospel. There's only one gospel, one faith, one God, one baptism. There's only one Lord of all, okay? There's only one gospel. There's only one word of God. He's not divided. He doesn't have double standard. He doesn't have multiple personalities here, okay? Jesus existed before the world began. Jesus, was, Jesus actually created, was involved in the creation of the world. And so Adam knew Jesus. Abraham knew Jesus, Moses knew Jesus, and John says here that Jesus was greater than him, obviously, because Jesus was before him, came before him, okay? Uh, he's not talking about who was born first, you know, not at all. He's talking about that Jesus came from eternity. Uh, so Jesus existed long before John did. Okay, so that's why Jesus surpasses John. Verse 16, from his fullness, we all received grace upon grace. Okay, when he said we all received grace upon grace, again, this is talking about from even before John was born. Okay, the grace upon grace was given right from the creation. I mean, creation was an act of grace. God didn't have to create anybody. Creation was an act of grace. The giving of the commandments and the instructions and the guidelines and how to live and be blessed of God, that was an act of grace. The Torah was an act of grace. The warnings of God against sin is an act of grace. From Him, from Jesus, from Yeshua, from the Word of God that existed from before the creation of the world, we receive grace upon grace over and over and over again through the ages. Verse 17, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Some translations would say the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, I want to make it very clear here that the word but in a lot of translations is not in the original language. It's not in the original manuscripts. There's no but as if, it's, as if, as if there's some kind of a, you know, contradiction or a con, a contrariness here. There's no contradiction. There is no fight. There's no law versus grace here at all. If they are opposed to one another, that means the law is not grace. That means the law is not truth. Now, don't say the law versus grace and leave out the law versus truth because grace and truth are together here. Grace and truth are in the same, the same hand, the same sentence, so to speak. So the law was an act of grace. And the law is truth because God spoke it. It's truth. God didn't lie when he gave them the law through Moses. In the same way, Jesus actually gave the law as well. He clarified the law many times. You know, he said, you know, you've said, you've, you heard it said, don't commit adultery. But I say, you've heard it, you, heard, you know, he said, you've heard it said, don't murder. But I say, he drove the law deeper. Okay. He expounded upon the law of Moses more. He didn't, re he didn't take it away at all. He actually even made it more applicable to us today. Almost everything that Jesus taught, if not everything that Jesus taught, was Torah, was the law of Moses. He just expounded on it a little bit more. He just clarified it. He just basically just drew the line, okay, uh, saying, you know, this is how you are to interpret the law. The law was, was, was given by Moses, but Jesus expounded upon it. So the law is not opposed to grace, just as the law is not opposed to truth. 
Truth is not opposed to the law, just like grace is not opposed to the law. It's all one, okay? It's just that what John's saying here basically is that Moses, the primary focus of Moses was the law, giving the law. The primary focus of Jesus was taking the law, expounding upon the law, teaching upon the law, and helping people to realize that through that law, we are to exercise grace because the law is truth. That's why Jesus said that you are to love your enemies because that's what, it's, that's what it teaches in the Torah. That's what the Torah teaches. The Torah teaches to, to love your enemies. So Jesus basically just took the law and, and, and made people see more of how to apply the grace and the truth of the law that is in the law. So yes, the law is not opposed to grace and the law is not opposed to truth. Grace, truth, and the law are one. Remember what the scriptures say in the New Testament? The law is holy, just, pure. The law is good. Okay? So don't forget that. Once again, thanks for watching, and may God bless you and give you insight, revelation, and yes, according to Daniel chapter 12, be a star shining in the, in the kingdom of God by leading other people to righteousness through repentance. In the name of Jesus, thank you.